In this tutorial, I'll be explaining the XAML app lifecycle more in depth. All Windows Store and XAML projects include a file called app.xaml. The main purpose of app.xaml is for holding resources, such as styles, pens, brushes, etc., that you would like to be made available throughout all of the different windows within the project. This file is the central starting point which suspends or resumes the application. In Windows 8, you can launch a bunch of apps and switch between them without having to worry about slowing down the system or running the battery down. That's because the system automatically suspends and sometimes terminates apps that are running in the background for you. A well-designed app can be suspended, terminated, and relaunched by the system, but will seem as though it had been running the entire time. App.xaml has the required methods to manage the lifecycle of your application. At any given point, a Windows 8 app may or may not be running or in a suspended state. An app can be suspended when a user switches away from it or when Windows enters a low power state. When your app is suspended, it continues to reside in memory so that users can quickly and reliably switch between suspended apps, resuming them. You don't have to write any extra code to make it look as though it had been running the entire time, but Windows can also terminate a suspended app at any time to free up memory for other apps or to save power. When your app is terminated, it stops running and is unloaded from memory. When the user closes an app by pressing Alt and F4, or using the close gesture, the app is suspended for 10 seconds and then terminated. Windows notifies your app when it is suspended, but it doesn't provide any additional notification when it terminates the app. When you launch your project, the onLaunched method in app.xaml will be called, and after some preliminary initialization, it creates a frame which acts as a navigation context to navigate to the first page in your project. By default, Visual Studio has created a page for you, named mainpage.xaml. You may notice that the name of this page has been passed as a navigation parameter to the navigate methods. If you add any new pages and would like to navigate to that page immediately after the application has launched, you should replace the main page text with the name of your page. Regardless, you don't need to make any changes to the app.xaml at this point. Now, let's move on to look at main page.xaml. It shows the basic style and some namespaces. By default, it creates a grid and is using the static resources of application page background theme brush which basically means you have one grid with a predefined theme and is black by default. Let's get our hands dirty by reviewing some examples together. In this example, we'll be creating two rows and two columns on a grid. As you see, we start with grid row definition with two rows that are defined. One has a height of 120 pixels and the other has no value. That means the second row will occupy the leftover space. This is similar for the columns, where it starts with a column definition, and one column has a fixed size of 200 pixels. Just like the rows, the other column doesn't specify a width, which means it will take up the leftover space. For example, assume the total width in this stage is 1100 pixels, so with a fixed value of 200 pixels, the second column is 900 pixels. Now, if you add a new column with the width of 2 star, then from the remaining 900 pixels, 2 thirds will be taken by this new column totaling 600 pixels. The column that doesn't have a width value will take the remaining 300 pixels. As you may have noticed, the star changes the width value from a fixed value to a percentage value. For example, if you want to give 40% to the first column and 60% to the second column, you would write it as seen here. 
If you want to define a column that takes up as much space as the content of the column needs, then you would need to use the word auto to make the column auto-resizable. As an example, assume you wanted to have a column with the fixed width of 100 pixels and another column auto-sized. Let me change my grid back to what it was before. I'll create a rectangle object with the width of 100 pixels and the height of 100 pixels and a margin of 20 pixels. Now, I'll add a stack panel to show how the child elements, which in this case are rectangles, will be placed one after another. As you see in the code, for each rectangle, I've chosen a different color, such as red, blue, green, and yellow. Run the program by pressing Ctrl and F5, and you see that the rectangles are stacked. After verifying the output, hold down Ctrl and press D to go back to Visual Studio. To stop the project from running, press the Stop button. Let's add a text block to add some text to the first column of our grid layout. Please note that the column numbers start from zero. I'll just add in the following code. And now I'll run the program to see the text shown in the middle column. Press Ctrl and D to go back to Visual Studio, and then press the Stop button to stop the project. Lastly, I'd like to show you how our canvas looks in our grid. Remove the code related to the stack panel and add the following line of code. Run the project and you see that the elements are positioned absolutely using the canvas top and canvas left attached properties. The rectangles are placed in different layers and these layers can also be explicitly specified using the canvas.z index attached property. This concludes a brief introduction to XAML layout panels. See you at the next tutorial.